I'm out here in Okaboji, Iowa. I've never been to Northwestern Iowa. I'm 12 miles south of the Minnesota border at about 40 miles east of uh, the square state to the west, um, Nebraska. <laughs> and uh, much to my surprise, there's what, something called the Five Great Lakes. And uh, top to bottom, it's Spirit Lake, East Okaboji Lake, West Okaboji Lake, and two smaller ones at the bottom. Uh, in total, it's 15,000 acres of water. Uh, only West Okaboji Lake is a glacier lake uh, with a depth of uh, up to 135 feet in areas. Uh, East Okaboji Lake is about 30 to 40 feet. And uh, Spirit Lake is about 10 to 25 feet. Uh, Spirit Lake, the town of Spirit Lake, has a population of 5,400. In the 1950s, they uh, supported two scout troops. Now they have one scout troop, uh, which is at best failing. Uh, Okaboji is a small little community down here. They have a population off season of 722 people. Arnold's Park, has a population of 1,155. Arnold's Park and Okaboji share the high school. Uh, and then just at the end of the map is a town, Milford. Uh, they also have a high school. And 15 miles south is the town of Spencer, which is the county seat of Clay County. And they have a population of 1,100. Um, the, uh, Milford has the strongest, uh, scout troop in the area and, uh, Arnold's park, uh, comes in second, uh, with a scout troop and, uh, a cub pack. Uh, and I figured there's a lot of water out here. So I started to ask lots of questions about sea scouting and, uh, you'll get to see what I've been able to find. So uh, I'm part, I'm, I'm a museum curator for the summer on uh, the Higgins Museum of National Banknotes. And I'm part of a group that meets once a month, uh, the Lakes Area Museums Council. And uh, so the Dickinson County Museum had a Boy Scout display and uh, the director, Mary Dreyer says, you got to meet an Eagle Scout we know, William Baker. So I came over, we arranged a meeting uh, early one day, and uh, this is uh, a lot of the results of we, what we got to share is William Baker's scouting career. So uh, there are some green and reds, reds and whites. There's the council name change to Prairie Gold area, and there's a uh, pocket patch. I haven't seen any segments, although at one time this uniform had segments on it, um, but I haven't uncovered any yet. These are now uh, Bill Baker's stuff. And on his uh, scout sash, he had his Prairie Grove reservation patch. Uh, he was camp staff in 1954. Um, the uh, camp was located, I forgot to point that out, I'll go back to the map in a minute, uh, but it's a 104 acre camp that the council owns from 1949 to 1974. And it was on West Lake Okaboji, right next to the state park. And they didn't even have a waterfront. The scout camp used the, water, uh, the waterfront at the state park. And here's a nice panoramic photo of uh, the scouts at camp. Just to go back, uh, this is Gulf Point, Gull, Gull Point, sorry, G-U-L-L. -L, and the, uh, the state park is on the lake end 
and the scout camp was in the center area. Uh, it, prior to 1949, when the scouts bought it, it was a golf course. And they used the country club of the golf course as their dining hall. And uh, those buildings don't exist anymore. The only thing that exists now on the property uh, besides hiking trails is a uh, A-frame chapel. Bill Baker and a, a scouting friend, John Matum, had their Eagle Scout ceremonies at the camp. So uh, these are some views of the Eagle ceremony. And that's Bill uh, giving his mom the mother's pin. Bill's father died uh, earlier. If you look at uh, the photo of John Matum, he's wearing an Ontario um, linen patch, uh, the, uh, the provincial uh, patch. And in 1953, uh, the uh, school bus driver from uh, Milford took um, 32 scouts in the school bus uh, for 10 days up to uh, Port Arthur, which now most of you would recognize as Thunder Bay, Ontario, for a week of camping along Lake Superior. Uh, the, on the uh, State Park side of uh, Gull Point is a beautiful uh, WPA uh, building. And uh, they use this for uh, banquet facilities today. You could rent it out. And this is the view of an area that could have been the lakefront uh, with just a current uh, pier on it. Uh, this is the largest WPA structure that was built in Iowa. And the uh, Dickinson County Museum has a nice uh, plaque uh, the standard brass plaque that would have been on the uh, stone gateway of the camp. Uh, and, and it was saved when the camp was closed. There was a lot of bitter feelings, of course, with the scouters in the area because uh, the, the council was not supposed to sell the camp, yada, yada, yada. Uh, for the Order of the Arrow uh, sampling, uh, Bill saved his ordeal arrow, uh, which he inscribed with uh, pencil on the date of his, uh, the date and year and uh, location of his ordeal. And uh, he also, uh, the, uh, the round patch is off of Bill's sash and the uh, flap is off of the uniform that's in the county museum. He also had an opportunity to go to the NOAC in Laramie uh, with uh, James Matum. Uh, that was the uh, other Eagle Scout um, about three years younger than his brother. So like the younger brother, even though the same age as Bill, uh, he doesn't make Eagle until later. And uh, so it's the, there's two, oh, there's a younger, older brother. The older brother doesn't go to the NOAC. But this is really interesting. It's a brand on a nice sliver of wood, which is about six inches uh, in size, a uh, length. And it's signed by all, a, a bunch of scouts, one of whom is definitely uh, from Spirit Lake. Uh, Bill didn't sign it, but this is Bill's piece of wood. But the Goodman signature on it is kind of nice to see. So yes, there are Sea Scouts. And uh, this is the only group picture I've been able to find. It's uh, in the collection of the Maritime Museum here in Arnold's Park. Uh, we've had some fun. Uh, between uh, myself and the director of the Maritime Museum to do some snooping. And we figured out that the signal flags spell nothing. Uh, 
even in black and white, and if you hold them the correct way, they still spell nothing. Uh, but we, uh, we were able to identify uh, this uh, pressed metal ceiling as uh, one of the churches in uh, Spirit Lake. And the, the newspaper articles uh, confirm the church where they were meeting most of the time. Um, it's, it's fun to see the ship model. This was not their a model of their ship. They had a 40-foot sloop. And uh, on the flag, you could still see, you could just barely make out the OTA, uh, which is actually a misspelling of the Indian name Ink Paduta, and uh, the troop number, the ship number 168. Uh, we'll get to the story of the Indian name in a little while. And uh, then there's a, a two star flag because this fellow is the Commodore for the council. And uh, he's the one who started the, the, the Sea Scout group. So this is their land ship at the church. They're all wearing Navy blue uniforms. They did not use uh, whites. And they used, uh, used, they did not use Boy Scout uh, uniforms. They used, used Navy uniforms. There was a large amount of men uh, coming back from, this is 1946, 47, 48. Uh, so a large number of uh, men in the area served in the Navy. So they gladly gave up their uniforms for the scout troop. So here we have a second photo showing that same press ceiling. And here we see the two star uh, Commodore flag. Uh, this is a year later uh, in 1948, and they're advertising the scouts going to uh, a, a uh, vacation show in Des Moines, uh, which is clear across the state. And here are just close-ups of the patches on the Spirit Lake uniform. And uh, we have uh, a Sea Scout regatta was uh, hosted at Camp Roosevelt uh, in Winnebago Council. And here's a photo of their land ship ceremony. And all the kids in blue are the, uh, the kids from uh, Spirit Lake, whereas the other units did have white uniforms. And this uh, Naper photo shows uh, one of the moth class sailboats that they used for uh, racing. They had two boats. They were built by the scouts and adults themselves. And they uh, it was a popular racing uh, design of the late 1940s. This uh, a two fun, another two group of articles these local newspapers are not on newspapers.com, which would be the my normal go-to research place, but uh, they are uh, they were all they were all the very local newspapers and is scanned by the local library system in Spirit Lake. Uh, please disregard the 1953 title about the slave auction. It somehow is just fitting that it just proves to me that Wisconsin still remains the northernmost southern state. Unfortunately, it's great to have a list of 16 kids, but sadly, all of them are deceased. Um, and, and that was a sad research uh, project to learn. And uh, this is a, a deviation since we're running good on time. Uh, last week, John was making fun of all the silly things I've done in, since leaving New York. So I wanted to put together some show. So uh, what do you do in Wisconsin in the winter? You go curling or ice fishing. And uh, you learn to like snow and uh, make it it's safe for others. And yes, you do take side trips to Iowa uh, to movie locations. 
And uh, yes, now that I have a little bit of land, I got to have too many cars. These are Czech or marathons, otherwise known as big city cabs. Uh, yes, I could go fly fishing too. It's a nice uh, relaxing way to spend an evening. And off season, you could uh, drill a pilot hole and try to cast into the pilot hole, but very seldom will you uh, find a fish that way. You could do historical society tours. Uh, you could learn where your property line is in the fall. Uh, during COVID, you could design a fortification for your mask. And uh, always be the clause, not the cause. Thank you very much.